Well, welcome to today's talk. It's Monday, the 31st of October. Now, I'm going to start off with a quote from this uh, review from the United States Senate. The emergence of SARS coronavirus 2 that resulted in the COVID-19 pandemic was most likely the result of a research-related incident. Most likely. And I've looked at the evidence quite a lot today, and I must say the evidence is pretty strong. So let's have a look at this now. Now, this is from this report here. Do uh, get it for yourself. Check it out. It is an eminently readable report. Um, it's not in any highfalutin jargon. It deals with some fairly complex uh, concepts. So it's not a, a casual read by any means, but it's well worth, uh, well worth a good look at. So let's dive straight into this now. Now, this is the first piece of evidence here. Now, this is before we get down to the sort of proper epidemiological uh, evidence. This is quite an interesting one here. Now, this is um, the Hunan seafood market where the outbreak uh, started, allegedly. This is the river here in Wuhan. And this is the Institute of Virology here. And these grey areas and crosses indicate the amount of searches done for flu-like symptoms on the main local search engine. And this starts off actually in December, uh, December, uh, the 20th of December um, 2019. So we see that most searches were initially done um, in this early period around about the Wuhan Institute of Virology, not around the Hunan seafood market where the outbreak uh, originally uh, alleged to have started. So I think that's quite interesting. It's the, on, the, on the other side of the river, and this is, so that's the river down there. And this is quite a few miles apart, of course. So, um, okay, that's circumstantial. Maybe just more people happen to be uh, connected to the internet around about the Wuhan Institute of Virology as opposed to the, uh, the uh, Hunan uh, seafood market. But I thought it was a pretty interesting piece of evidence just to, to start us off. But it gets it gets better than that. So um, the modelers thought that cases probably started from this in uh, mid-October. So by the time people started doing these searches in uh, 20th of the December 2019, um, the virus had already spread quite a bit with probably quite a lot of ongoing human-to-human -human transmission going on already around about the epicentre of the Wuhan Institute of, of Virology. Now, um, the next line of evidence, uh, analysis of natural zoonotic origins hypothesis. Now, this is quite interesting. Um, severe acute respiratory syndrome, that's what we used to, what kind of what we call SARS-1, the one that was 2002-2003. And the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome that came about 2009. Um, these are both coronaviruses and they are both known to be natural spillover events. The epidemiolo uh, epidemiology is identified, the serology is there, the intermediate species are there. There's still a few cases a year actually of uh, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome occur in Saudi Arabia, mostly Saudi Arabia, from uh, camels, where people often keep uh, camels. Um, so that's well known, but as we'll see, SARS coronavirus 2, completely different. There's no intermediate uh, between. Now, almost certainly this came from bats to humans, but there's no intermediate species identified. Now, this is quite interesting here, this screen here. Uh, now, these is, this is the area where the virus or the, the, most <clears throat> the, the virus with the most uh, genetic similarity, similarities are about a thousand miles from, uh, from Wuhan, which is up here. Um, now, it's also possible that it could have come from seven there or 11 or 10 in these other provinces. But the most genetically similar viruses are here about a thousand miles from Wuhan. Now, whereas uh, influenza travels in birds, of course, um, it seems like mammals are the vector of the coronaviruses. So that would be a long way for an animal to walk a thousand miles without um, leaving any um, intermediate infections along the way. So that already started to sound a little bit uh, unlikely. But let's, let's carry on. And now the virus needed to circulate in an intermediate host. 
So the virus doesn't go straight from bats to humans, it goes via an intermediate host. And it doesn't do that instantly, it has to circulate in the, in the, in the intermediate host for a period of time. Uh, because uh, an animal virus must evolve to gain human infecting potential. So it has to be in the intermediate species for a period of time. And of course that gives it plenty of time to spread in the intermediate species. The closest virus is a horseshoe bat resident in southern China and Southeast Asia, so that's where it most likely came from, just here. Now, because it would have to be circulating in the intermediate host for a period of time, it would have spread extensively in the in intermediate host. There would have been mutations in the intermediate host, and the mutations have not been found, and the intermediate host has not been found which is, is surprising, if it were a natural spillover event. So as we say, the main area where the virus likely came from, a thousand miles, but no, inter no infections in this area, for example, as the virus would have spread from intermediate animal to intermediate animal, but no evidence of that. And as we say, from, from this area here up into Wuhan is about a thousand miles, so a long way for an animal to walk. I think we can be pretty confident it didn't spread from bats to uh, bir from bats to birds. It's via some mammal, almost certainly. So epidemiology of SARS coronavirus two outbreak differs from previous natural zoonotic spillovers. Now, there's no dead end species here with an epidemiological train in other animals, so. Presumably, if it had been spreading for a while, there would have been the antibodies in other animals, there would have been viruses identified in other animals. And not only that, we know that infected humans can infect other animals, like cats and gorillas, for example, and, and dogs and hamsters and uh, um, mink. Um, th these things are well known. So why, if this intermediate species was walking a thousand miles um, uh, east, did it not infect any other animals? There's just no trail. It doesn't make a lot of sense that there was an intermediate species, according to this reason. Now, if we take the, influ uh, the example of influenza, infected poultry and birds uh, are always found. Now, the exception to this is the 1977 Russian flu outbreak, which probably did come from a laboratory, actually, in Russia. But apart from that, as we know, we see these dreadful pictures of mass culls of, uh, of birds chickens, other poultry, and we see terrible pictures of wild birds dying as well from, from influenza. I mean, there's bird influenza now. Thankfully, it hasn't spread to humans. But this example here from 2019 was H7N9, and there was multiple independent introductions across multiple regions. So what we normally see with a natural spillover event, whether it's influenza or whether it was SARS coronavirus 1, is that there's not one incidence of infecting humans. There is many over a period of time. That's what we would expect. But it's not what we see with SARS coronavirus 2. So um, geographical disparate independent spillover events occurred in H7N9. These are documented. So avine influenza 2019 had circulated in bird populations. This is known for sure. The virology was done in birds and in poultry. Now, thankfully, this influenza outbreak of 2019 only ended up in about 500 human infections that were identified. It didn't become a pandemic. But it just shows the way that the virus can jump from, hu from animals to humans in the natural environment, but we get these multiple events, not the single event. Uh, so across time and several provinces in China before the first known human infections occurred. Now, he here's the graphic for that here. So what this shows is these are the different provinces in China. So that's probably about a thousand miles or more across there. And um, there was an outbreak down here in this one. There was an outbreak in Hunan. There was an outbreak in Fujian. There was an outbreak in Shandong. There was an outbreak in Hendang. Uh, these numbers here are the number of cases and the blue ones, the number of deaths. So there were outbreaks over a period of uh, several months in many geographical areas, but it's not what we saw with SARS coronavirus 2. We saw a single origin at a single place at a single time. And this is not what we normally see with normal uh, zoonotic spillover infections. This, this is unusual. So there's that graphic there showing it started at various times in various places. 
with the influenza. So we've seen this is true with influenza, and we've seen this is true with uh, Middle East respiratory syndrome, which is a coronavirus, multiple origins, multiple relapses. In fact, still, as we said, still getting some cases now. SARS coronavirus 1 does seem to have gone altogether. There's no, um, there doesn't seem to be any um, residual uh, SARS coronavirus 1 on the planet, uh, which is good. Um, but the Middle East respiratory syndrome keep, keeps popping up. So look, looking at this SARS uh, epidemic, the 2002-2003, there was at least five, at least five independent spillover events into humans. At least five, probably more. That's just five that are documented. Now, um, live animal markets followed by human-to-human -to -human transmission. So again, this SARS coronavirus 1, um, at least SARS coronavirus 1, we know originated in these wretched uh, wet wet markets they have where they have live and dead animals all together and things in china but there's lots of animals all together shedding viruses um and uh, whether it's in air whether it's in feces wh whatever it's in uh in infecting um other animals than humans and that's what happened at least five different times transmission to humans and here's the graphic that shows this actually this is um this is this is uh, where it actually started. This is Guangdong province in China. Now, this is a 100 kilometres scale here. So we see that uh, where there's an outbreak here and there's another outbreak, what, three, four, four hundred, five hundred kilometres away. So we see multiple outbreaks o over a period of time. OK, it's all within one province, but multiple, air multiple outbreaks over a period of time in the SARS uh, coronavirus 1, 2002, 2003. And again, not what we see in SARS coronavirus 2. Um, so there's the graphic for that showing the, the diffuse area of different spillover events. Now, the, the, re the reason here is that um, the, 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 the CVIC cats and the other, the other vectors that, the, that had this disease, these would be all over the place. So they would be transmitting to humans from a large animal reservoir of uh, infection. Exactly the same as we would have got with uh, the large animal reservoir, in this case from birds, from the, um, from the avine situation. So in this situation here, there would, be, uh, there would be birds all over the place that are infected. So because the virus had already spread all around in birds, um, so it's all spread from bird to bird all, all over here, then you end up with potentially millions of infected birds, tens of millions of infected birds, all infecting humans here and here and here and here and here and here, all over the place. Because there's a large animal reservoir um, of the virus already, not what we see with uh, SARS coronavirus 2. So getting getting back to the, uh, the SARS coronavirus 1, the original one, Many animals infecting all over the place, so we get these multiple outbreaks in humans. And actually later, um, so that the original outbreak there, that was 2002-2003. But then in 2003-2004, uh, basically a year later, uh, there was further additional independent uh, outbreaks. So if SARS coronavirus 2 has come from an animal an intermediate animal, a natural spillover event, why haven't we seen further spillover events into humans? Why did it only happen the once? Because if it was from an animal, we would have expected to see spillover events at the time, multiple areas, multiple times, and still some new spillover events now because the animal reservoir would be full of viruses. But we're not seeing that, indicating there is no animal reservoir. This is the problem. There doesn't appear to be an animal reservoir. Uh, in, in, so in addition to these additional um, spillover events in humans after the original SARS, CVIC cats were identified as the animal intermediate host within a few months, six months. And now we've had three years and nothing. Early SARS samples from humans contained genetic mutations that reflected prior circulation. So when the original SARS coronavirus 1 in 2002-2003 came along, the virus was already evolved and mutated. There was many different strains of the virus that indicated the virus had been circulating for a long time in the animal reservoir, giving rise to genetic variations in the virus, indicating there'd been previous evolution of the virus over time 
in the animal hosts, not what we see with SARS coronavirus 2. So the case really does become fairly compelling. So in total contrast, now the Chinese government asserted that SARS coronavirus 2 originated from a natural zoonotic transmission occurring at Hunan Market. Now they've now backpedaled on that. They're saying that it came into the country through uh, fo- frozen food. And by the way, this tells us nothing about um, any collaboration between the NIH and Wuhan. We simply don't know about that, although we know that there was funding there. But uh, this is indicating that the virus originated on the ground in China. So the back pedaled on that, but it's not in the Chinese government that actually asserted this. Um, virologists and epidemiologists also assert this, that there was a single origin at a single place. Not what we expect to see by any means with natural spillover infections. Now, this graphic here is, is um, I know you won't be able to see this, but this is the, uh, the geotemporal spread, so place and time. So basically, it starts in a very small area here. Uh, it gets bigger, uh, gets bigger. The darker area with higher cases gets bigger, gets bigger, gets bigger. And because the World Health Organization, when we said stop the flights out of China, the World Health Organization said carry on, then we had a pandemic. Um, pity, pity they didn't stop the flights at an earlier stage, but they didn't. So that, there we go. It started in this just this one area, of, uh, this one area, Wuhan in Hubei here. Just that one area, once a, an initial initiating event, then it spread more and more cases to other parts of China from a central location. We did not see, we do not see multiple spillover events as we would expect to see. Um, in addition, the earliest um, SARS coronavirus 2 was well adapted for human to human transmission. We would expect this to develop over time as it evolved in the intermediate species. This like hit the ground running as it were. It's like, it's like it was fully formed. Well, we don't get fully formed viruses. There has to be an evolutionary process unless it came from human manipulation. So that is further evidence there. It was already very well suited for human to human transmission. that started early. The early SARS coronavirus 2 variants that were identified had little genetic ver- diversity. Two nucleotides in the samples taken, there was only two nucleotides difference. Uh, out f- and there's 29,900, nearly 30,000 nucleotides in the virus. And the nucleotides, remember, the, the A, C, G and U, the, the, these, there's only four, the nucleotides that make up the string of uh, ribonucleic acid, the RNA that codes for the amino acids and proteins of the virus. So only two variants, whereas now we see multiple variants. Now, these two variants could have, could have uh, mutated just after a, a few transmissions of the virus between people. But if it had come from animals, we would have expected multiple mutations, as we saw with SARS coronavirus 1. And we didn't, we don't see that. Initially, there was only two forms of the virus that, that started the pandemic off. All these others, the, the Alpha, the Delta, the, 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 the Omicron, all this came after. Um, this came after it had started to spread in human to human spread. So, um, again, further compelling evidence, really. All the early viruses were the same. Um, no evidence of previous intermittent host circulation, as we've said. Genetic similarities between the environmental samples and the human samples. So the environmental samples from Wuhan. So what happened here was the um, they went to uh, they, they did some early research in the Wuhan market and on the the, the animals had all gone, but um, on the surfaces and on the floor they found they found uh, SARS coronavirus two. They found the virus. Um, but the viral genomes were essentially identical, just as we said, just one or two nucleotides different to those that were causing early infections in humans. So this means that the early virus from the um, in, in the market in, in Wuhan could well have come from humans. So it could have been the humans infecting the market, not, not the other way around. Um, because as we saw, the original searches for cases were more around the Wuhan Institute of Technology. So this idea supports the likelihood that the virus found in the Hunan market was shed by humans and the market then became a smaller epicenter. So that's some of the science. Now there's lots more, I'm not going to, there's a lot more science to come but I'm going to 
I'll leave it there for now for the science. But I want to tell you why this is important. We, we can do, do a follow-up on this. I, I might do some, because the science is pretty convincing. But this is signed off by Richard Burr, Senator, um, Health, Education, Labour and Pensions Committee, to address the pan this is the this is the sort of terms of reference really to address the pandemic preparedness and response programs because we need to know what went wrong otherwise the next time a pandemic comes along where the virus is probably 50 or 100 times more deadly we need to get it right straight away not this faffing around for months like happened with this one the human race made a complete pig's ear of the, the initial management of this virus um, we need to get it right next time because we were fortunate, in inverted commas, that the although this viral is lethal for some, it could have been lethal for many, many more. Um, Middle East respiratory syndrome, for example, the, the, the lethality is about, the, the death rate is about 50%. And the infection fatality rate is way higher. And, and this could be what the next virus is. It could be a very, very much more lethal virus that could kill half of humanity. Now, this, this sounds like hyperbole, but it's actually not. The bubonic plague killed 40 to 60 percent of the European populations it infected. Um, a new virus could potentially do the same unless we get it right next time. And that means we have to learn from this one. Um, they've been studying this for 15 months, viewed hundreds of scientific studies, interviewed dozens of subject matter experts analyze previous reports <clears throat> but they also say the lack of transparency and collaboration from the chinese government and public health offices in the people's republic of china with respect to the origins of sars coronavirus 2 prevents reaching a more definitive conclusion so this is just based on the information they've got and uh so the senator says this is richard burr says i hope the report will guide the world health organization and other international international institutions i agree with him so um, there we go. Um, this is the problem. Uh, in fact, the People's Republic of China have prohibited sharing or publishing any information on SARS coronavirus 2 without state review and approval. So basically, all we get now is the official line. So it probably started in October 2019. So that's some of the evidence uh, indicating, or some of the inconsistencies indicating that this probably did have a uh, laboratory origin that's the view of the senate committee and that is now uh, my view as well and not only the evidence i've given here um, i'll give some more um, probably tomorrow but for now uh, thank you for watching